नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वैष्णव एटिकेट और वैष्णव सदाचार आर लाइक ऑर्नमेंट्स विच डेकोरेट्स द बॉडी ऑफ द डिवोटी व्हाट मेक्स द डिवोटी वेरी अट्रैक्टिव आर दीज डिफरेंट एटिकेट्स दैट वी लर्न सो लेट्स लर्न टुडे थ्री एटिकेट्स sitting walking and dancing let's begin with the first one sitting now it's again a very important thing to learn how to sit in the vedic times it was very uh, obvious how to sit but now as the age is degrading and since you now we are used to in this entire modern culture it becomes very difficult to understand how to sit therefore we need an explicit description of how to sit now say we are in a temple in a temple atmosphere or we are there at home also where we have a altar of the lord so one thing that we have to take care is we when we are sitting we don't show our feet to the personalities be it the lord or be it the senior vaishnavas therefore you see in the vedic culture the clothes that they wear are dhoti and sari and when we sit say cross leg we are sitting or we are sitting on the chair also for that matter so naturally we will see that dhoti covers the feet or sari covers the feet so in this way it's very natural that will not be showing our feet either to the deities or to the superiors who are there this is the first thing so whenever we sit beat cross leg or beat sitting on the chair we have to make sure that we don't show our feet second we shouldn't show our back to the lord or to the superiors so say the altar is here so i cannot sit like this with the back where i'm showing my back to the altar obviously at times there might be a setup where uh, the temple hall is small or something like that but still we should sit at an angle in such a way that our complete back is not shown to the lord or to the superiors so in this way whenever we say the lord so we're talking about the altar we're talking about tulasi maharani we're talking about the speaker on the vyasasan so all these different personalities are considered when we say lord or devotees the next thing is we shouldn't spread our legs and sit now we will see that uh, when we are sitting for a class say a pravachan is happening bhagavatam class or bhagavad gita class and the legs are paining so sometimes you know we might stretch our legs pointing towards the lord or pointing towards the devotee who is giving the class now that is not proper that is not a proper etiquette so legs we cannot spread the legs so that is when we are sitting down when we are sitting on the chair whatever reason because of health issue or whatever so we cannot spread our legs and show our legs you know to the superiors who are there or the lord in the altar so we should sit in such a way that our legs are not spread are not shown towards the personalities the divine personalities so it's a very important thing don't spread legs now at times what happens is while doing our japa chanting or while uh, we are sitting in the class so we tend it's a natural tendency you know, where we sit in different positions because for a long time to sit sit straight might be difficult with the crossed leg so what do we start doing we start uh, sitting with one leg up and then you know, a crossed and then we start holding the ankle an- our ankle our ankle not ankle our ankle or our knees or holding the feet and sitting as it is shown here in the photos so it is not proper so if to sit in front of the lord in a position which is proper which is respectful it should show our sitting posture should show that yes we are showing respect 
towards the Lord and towards the Vaishnavas. The next thing is, which is very difficult, but it has, we have to follow this. We shouldn't be sleeping in front of the altar. We shouldn't fall asleep in front of the deities or in front of, you know, when the class is going on. Obviously, at times, because of tiredness, this might happen. So immediately, we should go and stand somewhere behind instead of sitting and sleeping in the entire class or sleeping in the japa or something like that. Therefore, it's very important that we learn how to sit. And it becomes all the more important because when we come in the crowd, people observe what we are doing. So one is respecting the Lord and the Vaishnavas and also setting an example. And we will see that such people you know, who follow this etiquette of properly sitting, they are very attractive. It feels very nice to look at them because they are maintaining the decorum, whatever is supposed to be maintained in the terms of Vaishnava etiquette. This is regarding sitting. Now let's talk about walking. Now again, we might say, what is so great about walking? What is there to discuss about walking? Again, in the Vaishnava, in the Vaishnava culture, in the Vedic times, people were naturally accustomed to walk properly, to sit properly. But then, now in the modern culture, as the culture is degrading, as people are least bothered about various etiquettes to be followed, everyone is independent, everyone is equal. So at this point of time, to understand how to walk is also very, very important. Now say a situation where Aarti is going on and then we have a lot of devotees standing and we have some space in between. And say we are the ones who are coming late for the Aarti. Now say we have to walk between the devotees and the altar. How should we walk? We cannot be straight and you know keep going and obstruct the darshan. So when devotees are taking darshan of the Lord, we cannot become the obstruction in between. We cannot become that personality who is obstructing their darshan. So how, how should we walk? So instead of walking straight, we should bend ourselves and then we should walk such that the devotees are able to take darshan of the Lord and Lord is glancing at the devotees. Same thing for any class also. Say a devotee is sitting on the Vyasasana and he is giving class. And then we have other devotees who are sitting and hearing. And say there is a space between the two. And now I want to go from this place to that place. From this end to that end. So I cannot go straight in front of the devotee sitting on the Vyasasana and the audience. Taking all the attention, seeking all the attention. That is not proper at all. So instead of walking straight, and that's the only path available, so I have to go from that path itself, so I'll bend myself. And, you know, we go showing that, you know, even we are embarrassed to walk like this, you know, in between. Even we are not interested, but what to do? The situation is like that. So, I am walking like this. So, this gesture or the way we walk, the body language, it shows that, you know, we are not very uncomfortable. We are not comfortable, but then what to do? This is the only space to walk. So, I am bending myself and, you know, I am walking. So, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. So, in this way, when we walk, and to make sure that you know we walk properly. Now another important thing, say you know many devotees are sitting, and now we have to go from back to the front or front to back, or say I'm sitting in one corner and then I have to walk from there to the door. I want to go and do some service, but now also many devotees are sitting in between. So what do I do? Keep jumping on everyone's head and the <laughs> laps <laughs> when we are walking. So at that time. We have to request devotees to give some way. How do we do that? We, we extend our hand and we bend down and then we show them that you know, and request them that I want to walk like this. And naturally, you know, the devotees will lift their knees on the side and then we'll be able to walk you know, from between. See, one thing we have to understand is we cannot cross over the bodies of people when we walk. Say, you know, I'm walking from this place to this place and a devotee is paying his obeisances, I cannot jump over the devotee. I have to wait for the devotee to get up or walk from the side. Mm -hmm. So I cannot jump over. This is not the right etiquette. In fact, in Chaitanya Chaitamrit, Govinda, the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was there in the room and he was massaging the Lord and the Lord was lying inside the room but blocking the door. The only way that Govinda could have gone out of the room is by crossing over Lord Chaitanya. 
But there he was setting an example and an etiquette that we shouldn't be crossing the body. Here Lord is lying himself. So where is the question of crossing the body of the Lord? So, no, he didn't do that. He didn't go like that. But he waited for the Lord to get up. And once the Lord got up from his divine uh, sleep, then Govinda took permission of Gauranga and then he left. So this is the way. There's no question of crossing the bodies now of people. Now when we are walking, say the crowd is you know, so much, you know, beat while walking or you know, everyone is sitting or you no know, people are there standing around. And in that crowd, you now we are walking. So there might be a possibility where our feet might touch other devotees. So what should I do at that time? It's an offense. Now how I can touch my feet you know, to someone else's body? That's an offense. So what do I do? Gently with my right hand, I touch their bodies. And I touch my forehead with the same right hand. Yes. So this goes on to say, that uh, we are begging forgiveness and at the same time, this particular uh, act nullifies the offense. Mm -hmm. Also at the same time, one has to be careful that if you are touching the opposite gender, one should make sure that you know it is uh, not done in an obnoxious uh, way which offends the other person. Mm -hmm. So this is also a very, very important thing. Better you know, not to walk at that place where you know, many people are there or say a male is walking through, so there shouldn't be many females in that particular place. So we should take care and walk accordingly. Hmm? See, so many things to learn when it comes to walking also. <laughs> Vaishnava etiquette. So in this way, we understood how to sit and how to walk. Now, one of the ecstatic moment or the event that happens in the association of devotees is Kirtan. So when the Kirtan starts, don't know where from the energy comes. Almost everyone in the crowd gets the energy and everyone starts dancing in ecstasy. Now we also have to note that how to dance, that is also important. Srila Rupa Goswami, he states that one should learn how to dance in front of the deities. See, our entire life is meant for service of the Lord. We don't have anything else. Because we are the servants of the Lord. Jevera Swarup Hoy Krishna Nitya Das. We are servants of the Lord. So, as the servant, my job is to give pleasure to the master. So, what are the different ways in which a servant can give pleasure to the master? He can sing for the pleasure of his master. He can dance for his pleasure of his master. He can do various physical service for the pleasure of his master. So similarly, this dance that is there is done for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. In Prabhupada's uh, Leela, Prabhupada would be sitting on the Vyasasana and all the devotees around would be jumping and dancing, jumping and dancing. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada would, uh, with his gesture, he would say, jump more higher, more higher. And devotees would jump even more high, even more high. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, one should learn how to dance in front of Guru and Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, few points that we can note is, when the dancing Kirtan is going on, we shouldn't stand as a spectator and just keep watching as if we have come there to watch some dance show. We have to participate. Because dance is a service. It's not just uh, an act you know, that, or it's not just that devotees are enjoying amongst themselves. It's an act of service. So we also should participate in that service when the service is happening, where everyone is dancing. Now there will be people who might not be interested to dance, especially newcomers, some guests. We shouldn't go and pull them hard and say, no, you also have to come. Participate in the service. How come you are standing? I heard in the Vaishnava etiquette class that everyone should dance and you pull them and then they are embarrassed. And maybe that is the last time they come to a temple. <laughs> Therefore, it's very important. If you want to request also, we gently request. If you understand they are too hesitant, we don't force them. No, we don't force them for dance. Now, another very important thing during Srila Prabhupada's time, when uh, this dancing Kirtan manifested, when Prabhupada would sing the Kirtan, girls and boys, they would come together, hold hands and you know, form various formations, dance together. So Prabhupada personally taught them that men should dance at one place, at one end and the females should dance at another end. There shouldn't be any free mixing because this is not a ball dance that is happening. 
there's not uh, you know some duet dance or something where male and female come together and dance the male should dance together and female should dance together there is no question of male and female coming together nataji and prabhu ji coming together and dancing so there should be separate groups and they should dance in their own groups this is the point yes now another very important thing dancing should be graceful and enthusiastic after all we are dancing for the pleasure of the lord so it has to be done very nicely enthusiastically gracefully not wild and violent as if you know some ghost has come in the body <laughs> so it has to be done very gracefully and enthusiastically hmm. now what about the dance steps since we are discussing about dance we should understand about the dance steps also hmm. first and foremost say we have a huge crowd of devotees so we will have the senior devotee in front so we should follow the senior devotee the steps that he is doing we should we all should be able to follow that so they are, they are the lead dancers and then we should be following them in fact during chaitanya mahaprabhu's time during rath yatra chaitanya mahaprabhu had formed seven circles in front of the jagannath rath and he himself in every single group he told who will be the lead dancer what does that mean the way he dances everyone else should be following that because we are dancing for the pleasure of the lord now just imagine there is a stage show going on a group dance and everyone is dancing the way they want now the audience they will not enjoy the dance similarly when we are dancing say lord is there in front or guru is there in front and we are dancing for their pleasure so at that time we should make it a point that we have to be in sync and how can we be in sync by following the lead dancer this is the first thing second the perfect dancing style is that of lord chaitanya so raising the arms and uh, dancing folding the palms and dancing at different times we can learn you know when senior devotees dance we can observe and we can learn how to do that when the lead singer is singing you know we have our, uh, our palms folded and then at the same time when we are singing we raise our arms and then we sing and we move gracefully dancing and in askon now uh, we have this famous swami step you know where we keep our right foot in front of the left and then again the left foot in front of the right and like this it goes on yes so this is the swami step the famous swami step which will prabhupa taught us our founder acharya has taught us everything he has taught us how which tune to sing in the kirtan how to dance how to do deity worship everything he has taught by his own personal example hmm. now talking about the various formations that we do so we can have various formations like for example when the kirtan is going on we can form circles holding each other's hand and then the circle comes to get, comes closer and then goes back and comes closer and goes back so like that the circle formation can be done and the dancing can be done accordingly another way of dancing is to make two rows and then come close and go back come close and go back yes that is another way of uh, formation that is there and then there are other ways also you know where say the lord the altar is there in front and devotees are lined up like this one after another and holding the hands you know they're dancing for the pleasure of the lord so the entire crowd moves in front and comes back moves in front closer to the lord and comes back so in this way you know the dancing can be done so this is another way of formation now once you take care that uh, when the formation is done say a circle or a line all the devotees should cooperate and make proper formations and lines why we are doing it for the pleasure of the lord so it has to be in sync and when it is in sync you know it will be very nice offering to the lord a dance offering to the lord now there are ways of dancing which we should avoid say the uh, devotees are in circle mm. and suddenly one devotee becomes ecstatic and wild and then he goes in between and stretches his arms and then turns up 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 now just imagine his arms are stretched and he's turning and it will be slap on every devotee's face then <laughs> so that should be avoided if we really want to turn so we should keep our hands uh, down and we should turn softly and gracefully and go in uh, you know round and round not in a way where we get uh, dizziness and we fall on some devotee in fact i remember i taken one uh, 
uh, devotee once to uh, one temple in Mumbai. And uh, since he was new, so I sat with him and we both were sitting and taking darshan of the Lord and Kirtan was going on. And one ecstatic devotee, he was, you know, turning, turning, turning and he f- came and he fell on the devotee who was sitting beside me. <laughs> If I'm not wrong, that was the last time that devotee came with me, that person came with me to the temple. <laughs> so we should make sure that our dance is proper, not goes and harms someone. Mm-hmm. Or the other way of dancing, sometimes you know, one devotee becomes ecstatic, this happens. When two devotees become ecstatic, they help each other, they come, they hold each other's hands and they turn, swirl around. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're not able to balance you know, while going around like this, we can just go and fall on some people. Say, you know, we leave the hand and since the motion is set, we leave the hand and this devotee falls on some devotee and this devotee also falls on some other devotee. So, it's very harm. It's very dangerous in fact, very harmful. Therefore, we shouldn't get into these dangerous steps. It should be graceful where our speed is controlled, our movements are controlled. Very important. And at times when a devotee becomes ecstatic, he wants to throw something up and he sees, oh, there's a child around and he picks up a child and then starts throwing the child, <laughs> catching the child, throwing the child. Mm. So, these are things not proper. Just imagine if the child falls by any chance, what will happen? Mm. That entire ecstatic dance will get converted into a very sad situation. So, one thing we have to understand is we are dancing for the pleasure of the Lord, not for our dancing. People outside, when they dance in the pubs and bars and other places, they dance for their own enjoyment. So, they dance the way they want. But we are dancing for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. So, we make sure that the dancing is proper mm-hmm. and not uh, improper. Mm-hmm. And another uh, point, you now when we do formations and dance, so, in the ecstatic mood, we shouldn't be pushing people. Mm-hmm. So, say we are going in circle, we push people. And that person pushed. So, if we keep pushing like that, you never know who will fall in that crowd. Mm-hmm. Therefore, these are the different etiquettes that we should maintain while dancing. So many things to learn. So many things to learn. Hats off to all the senior devotees who have compiled these different etiquettes so that we neophytes can learn how to sit, how to walk, and how to dance. So, again, we repeat the thumb rule for learning these Vaishnava etiquette, Vaishnava Sadachar is. All this that we learn is only for myself. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.